Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discussion about uh, computing transition probabilities, um, uh, one step transition probabilities I showed you and we had just started talking about two step transition probabilities. So, just consider a case, in the last lecture I considered the case x 2 equal to 1, x naught equal to 1, now let us look at x 2 equal to 2 and x naught equal to 1. So, in that case you see what are the possible routes for, of transitioning from the initial state of 1 to uh, the state 2 in two steps. So, want to, want to look at it and of course, the three possible paths would be see at state 0. So, this is uh, time period 0, time period 1, time period 2 and these uh, give you the states. So, therefore, um, at time 0 the system is in state 1, it transitions to state 1 that is a possibility because in one step you may transition to 1, 2 or 3 and then you have to come back to um, uh, state 2. So, therefore, one possible route would be from 1 to 1 and then 1 to 2, right. So, in one step uh, transition in one period you go from 1 to 1 and then from 1 to 2. Similarly, you could go from 1 to 2, that means you transition to, uh, so this was our production and this is H r. So, from production to H r and then H r to again um, H r, right, you can continue here. Or the third route would be from 1 to 3, that means from production to sales and then sales to H r. So, these are the three routes and that I have written down the three routes in this way. Okay. These, these are the three possible ways, no other uh, route is possible of going from uh, 1 to 2 in two steps. Right. Okay. Now, we need to compute the probabilities of traversing these paths, because we want to compute two step transition uh, <coughs> probabilities. Now, look at the first path. So, the first path I know the probability of transitioning from uh, 1 to 1, when I am uh, initially in state 1 and I am now um, transforming or transitioning to state 1 in the next uh, next, uh, next time period, then it is p 1 1, I know that. Now, look at this part of the leg. So, there uh, are two parts of the <coughs> uh, journey from 1 to uh, 2, for example. So, this is this. So, one. So first leg I know, we already know these are the one step transition probabilities. Now, we use the Markovian property, because you see uh, the probability that you want to compute is of going from 1 to 2 in that means, you are actually looking for a probability x 1 to 1, uh, x, you are in 1 at uh, time period 1 and you want to transition to uh, 2 at time period 2. right? So, then you see this is independent of the first leg, why? Because you see um, this is indep uh, the Markovian property says that from here to here the transitioning probability is independent of where I was at time uh, 0, uh, the initial state. So, it is independent of the value of x 0 right? and therefore, I can write the uh, pro pro probability of traversing this path as product of the first leg into the uh, probability of the second leg. So, this is the idea and this is where I am using and otherwise I would not be able to write these uh, transition probabilities, two step transition probabilities, if I did not have the advantage of uh, the Markovian uh, property. Okay. So, it is clear that because as remember I said that the past history is not important for computing, is not required for computing the transition probabilities. So, uh, the here it is um, where you are currently and where you want to transition. So, this is the only uh, thing that we need to compute the probability. I do not need to know where, what was the value of x naught. Right? And so, therefore, the two are independent and since by our stationarity, so the stationarity property, yeah, I should say that stationarity property gives us, says that, uh, says that probability x 1 equal to 1 and transitioning to x 2 equal to 2, that means the conditional probability of being in 1 and then transitioning to 2, this is same as probability x naught equal to 1 um, transitioning to x 1 equal to uh, 2. Right. So, remember because we said that stationarity says that probability x n plus 1 equal to j given x n equal to uh, i 
is the same as probability x 1 equal to j given x naught equal to i. Right. So, the stationarity property say that these transition one step transition probabilities remain the same uh, no matter in which time period you are and therefore, uh, this transition probability of going from 1 to 2 was the same as uh, probability x 0 equal to 1. So, going from here to 2 in the initial stage. Okay. So, therefore, we are able to write down the probability of traversing these paths and so I have written them down here uh, for all the three paths. So, this is for the first path, this is for the second one, because you are going from 1 to 2 and then 2 to 2. Um, okay, why have I written it as uh, 1, P, P 1. Oh, okay, okay. this was two, 1 to 2 and the, here I am using the fact that you are going from, uh, yeah, what is this path x 2 equal to 2. So, what is the path I have written here? Um, uh, x naught equal to 1. So, 1 1 and 1 2, uh, 1 1 and 1 2. So, this is the path. Right? and then you have uh, 1, 2 and 2, 2. Uh, so, that should be, uh -huh. so this is that one and this is this one and this is the third one, uh, 1, 2, 3 and then 3, 2, 2. Okay. So, this is 1, 1 and 1, 2 and this is 1, 2 and 2, 2. So, that is the one which I have written here and then this is the one corresponding to this and then uh, this is uh, 1, 2, 3 and 3, 2, 2. Okay. Uh, p 1 1 say okay, I do not know why am I writing this as x naught is 1 and then you are going to uh, what is this path? This will be 1 3 and then this will be 3 2. Oh, oh okay, okay, sorry. All these 3, yeah, yeah I am sorry. These three paths together uh, give you give you this probability, right? Of x naught equal to one and x two equal to two. Yes, um, this is uh, so. These are the three possible ways of going from one to two in two steps, right? Two step transition. So all these three add up to this. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is the one, right? Okay, p one one, p one two, and then p one two, p two two. So this is uh, this is p one one, one two. Then this is one two, two two which is this, this path and then it is 1, 3 and 3, 2. So, 1, 3 and 3, 2. So, these are the things. So, now similarly, when you want to, when your um, uh, x 0 is 1 and then x 2 is 1, okay, that means in two steps you want to transition from 1 to 1. So, again you will have three possible such paths, right. Um, so maybe I will just again repeat the whole thing, so that there is no confusion. So, for example, you can go from 1 to 1 and then uh, 1, 2. So, this is here. See, the path corresponding to this will be this. right? So, maybe I make it this thing. Yeah, just to and then uh, what is the possible way you can go from here? So, 1 to 2 and then 2 to 1. So, 1 to 2, yes and then 2 to 1. So, this is the one. right? And then the uh, third path would be when you want 1 to 3 and then 3 to uh, 1, right? 1 to 3. So, you would go from 1 to 3 and then 3 to 1. So, this will be 3 paths and then for each path you write down the probability. So, this corresponds to the 3 uh, uh, exclusive paths through which you can go from 1 to 1 in 2 steps. Okay? And similarly, this will be 3. So, now uh, you have computed uh, all the uh, 2 step transition probabilities for when x naught is 1. Right, and then in the in two steps you can be in one, two, or three, and so uh, similarly you will have uh, six more uh, such transition probabilities when x naught is two, and then you want to transition to one or two or uh, three in two steps, starting from uh, state two uh, at time zero. Okay, and then uh, finally it will be x naught equal to three. So, x naught is equal to 3. So, because you do not know, you could be in any of the three states uh, at the beginning of the process. And so, um, x 2 is equal to 1, you are transitioning to 1 from 3 in 2 steps, from 3 to 2 in 2 steps and from 3 to 3 in 2 steps. Right. So, let uh, p 2 denote the, let p 2 denote the uh, matrix of 2 step transition probabilities. Just as p, we are not writing p 1, it is understood p 1, we is said is, is, is p. So, this is a transition matrix of one step uh, transition probabilities. Now, let p 2 denote the matrix of two step 
transition probabilities, then we will just quickly notice that p 2 is actually p square, because um, yeah, here you have written the uh, components of this. Let me just write down, say for example, if you want to write, so p 2, uh, this here will be, the first one will be uh, p 1 1 2 you want to look at, right. And so, uh, that will be going from, so p 1 2, p 2 1 plus p 1 3, oh, okay. first of all it will be 1 1, 1 1, then it will be 1 2, p 2 1 plus p 1 3, p 3 1. Hmm. So, this will be your first element, right. These are the three parts, which I had drawn in the last lecture. Okay. So, then you see this is multiplying uh, p 1 1, p 1 2, p 1 3, the first row of p and with p 1 1, p 2 1, p 3 1. Yes. So, if you multiply the first row of p with the first column of p, you get the entry p 1 1 2. Right. And now, you can also verify this. For example, this is the first row p 1 1, p 1 2, p 1 3, you are multiplying with the second column. Uh, p 1 2, p 2 2, p 3 2. Right. So, to get the entry uh, 1 2 in, uh, 1 2 in that means, here if you want to get the entry uh, 1 2, then you are multiplying the first row of p with the second column of p. And therefore, you can just verify yourself quickly that uh, p 2, the second step transition matrix is nothing but the uh, product of p and p. So, that makes life very easy and we will show that this is valid for all values of, for higher powers of p also. That means, if you want to look at, yeah. So, let me just show you systematically that we would be, we are really on the path of getting a very interesting and very useful result. Because to be able to compute these transition probabilities, any step transition probabilities by raising the power of p is a very convenient way of uh, getting the uh, transition probability, right. So, if you are want to know that what is the probability that um, uh, you will be in 10 steps, you will be from i to j starting in state i, you will be in state j, then the 10th, uh, the uh, i j th entry of p 10 will give you the that probability and so on. So, we will see that. Yeah. So, um, uh, basically what we have done, we have shown is that your two step transition uh, probabilities can be expressed in terms of one step transition probabilities, right. Because we are just uh, multiplying the uh, one step transition matrix with itself and we are getting computing the two step transition probabilities, right. Okay. Now, um, the same way we can do it for um, uh, any power and uh, here again I just want to spend time. It may look like a little repetition, but it does not matter, because you must get the ideas very clear. So, for example, now, uh, yeah. So, the whole uh, target is now to compute p i j k. That means, k step transition probabilities we want to compute. And so, here again, I will just start from x 3 equal to 1 and uh, x naught equal to 1. So, suppose now, the three step, three steps you want to transition from 1 to 1. Okay. So, this again I can break up uh, like this, x naught starting with 1. Uh, you are uh, in two steps in one st uh, state one, and then you'll be uh, going again transitioning to one, right? So this is this is your two-step uh, transition probabilities, and then this is your one-step. So again, I can write down this, and now these three paths are mutually exclusive and exhaustive, right? There's no other because the, uh, you can go to uh, x two. Uh, you, you can be at uh, after two steps, after two transitions, you can be in state 1, 2 or 3, right, starting from x naught equal to 1. And, and then you have to transition finally to uh, state 1. So, therefore, these are the three parts, right. And here again, we are using the Markov property, because this one is this, then this, this part of the uh, path will be independent of the probability for this because here you have x 2 equal to 2 and x 3 equal to 1. So, the only the current uh, state is uh, needed to compute the transition probability and this is not dependent on where you were earlier, either at x 1 or at x naught. That is not important. So, therefore, we will write this and again using uh, stationarity, I will simply be able to write this also again as a one step transition probability of going from 3 to 1. Right. So, therefore, uh, you see that uh, these uh, three probabilities can be written as p 1 1 2 
yes in two steps you are going from 1 to 1 and then uh, again uh, in one step you are going from 1 to 1. So, this is p 1 1 2 and p 1 1 right. Similarly, a two step transition from 1 to 2, 1 to 2 p 2 and then 2 to 1 p 2 1 plus p 1 3 2 and p 3 1 right. This is So, and then I can write down um, x 3 equal to 2 when x naught is 1 and then of course, probability x 3 equal to 3 x naught equal to 1 right. This will also be equal to. So, p 1 1 p 1 3 plus uh, p 1 2 p 2 3 plus p 1 3 p 3 3. So, this is the first row of and you can see that uh, since this is your uh, element of uh, uh, p square. So, therefore, if you write uh, this these are the entries of your p square and then you are again multiplying by p 1 1 p 2 1 p 3 1. So, that means uh, essentially yeah. Okay. So, we saw that p 3 that means, if you want the three step transition probabilities this will be given by p 2 p square into p. So, again a third power of p and so in general we will should be we can now say that if we want n step transition probabilities then this will simply be raising the matrix p to power n that means, multiplying p n times and the entries in p uh, n will give us all the n step all the n step transition probabilities that we need right. Okay. Uh, now, there is another method through walks on the on the transition graph but you will soon realize that it is not a very efficient method. It is fine to see what is happening when your graph is small and the number of states are also not too many. So, for example, when you want to look at this probability of two step transition probability from going from 1 to 1, right. So, which would mean that you traverse this loop once and then again one more time. So, two times you traverse this loop and you uh, have this then you can compute the probability, which would mean that since the traverse uh, probability of traversing the loop once is p 1 1. So, when you do it twice it will become. So, the probability would be. So, probability of this would be p 1 1 square right fine. Then if you want to um, for example, compute the three step transition probability of going from 1 to 1. Then let us see what are the. So, we will try to see all possible paths on this transition graph uh, while of going from 1 to 1 right. So, of course, uh, I have not written the details for example, x naught equal to 1, x 1 equal to 1, x 2 equal to 1 and x 3 equal to 1. I have just <laughs> you know made the notation simpler. So, here this tells you the uh, you know the one path which is you are traversing this loop 4 times right. Uh, I mean 1 to 1, so 3 times 1 to 1 then 2 and then then 3, 3 times because 3 to step transition probability. So, uh, this path you will traverse 3 times that means, the loop you will traverse 3 times. Then um, uh, the possibility is that you go from you traverse the loop once then you go to 2 and then from 2 you go to uh, come, uh, come back to 1 right. So, you traverse this loop twice then you go to 2 and then 2 to 1. So, this is one path and therefore, here again you can write down the probabilities as p 1 1 square into p 1 2 plus p 2 1 right. So, once you write down, so there are 8 possible paths you can see that right 3 step transition and you have in the, this uh, 3 possible states. So, therefore, um, 8 possible paths and similarly like 1 to 2. So, you go from uh, 1 to 2 then you traverse this loop 2 to 2 then 2 to 1. So, this will be p 1 2 into p 2 2 then p 2 1 right. So, this way I can write down all the probabilities and then uh, compute the. So, therefore, they are all distinct paths and you can uh, compute the probability of each path and as I told you each leg of the path is independent. So, we are multiplying the corresponding uh, probabilities of traversing each leg of the path and so you can write down. But you see that this will become really cumbersome the moment uh, your number of states become you know if you had 4 to 5 states or even you know easily uh, any Markov process that you consider may have 7 to 8 or 10 uh, states. Then you see uh, uh, the possible number of the number of paths will really go up 
right exponentially and then you may it uh, since uh, it's very likely that you will uh, miss miss out on some of the paths because you have to enumerate all possible paths and here in this case only uh, you know uh, for x3 equal to uh, the three step transition probabilities uh, for one you know going from 1 to 1 you had to enumerate eight paths now if it becomes x4 it will be 16 paths so the number just will uh, blow up and th so therefore this is for large n and for large number of states uh, uh, that means if you want uh, 10 step transition probabilities and uh, your number of states is also 10, then it is just not possible for you to enumerate all possible paths and then compute the probabilities. But for small cases and in fact to see actually what is happening, uh, this is a good way. Right? So, um, I thought I will just uh, talk to you about it and when you are working out small problems, you can actually see this, but otherwise this is really a very efficient uh, way of uh, uh, computing the uh, uh, higher order transition probabilities. Okay. Now, uh, this is fine. So, therefore, we have now a method of computing any step transition probabilities provided we are given the one step transition probabilities. Right. But uh, again, uh, there is some more information that we need and that is uh, see the value of x naught is not known with certainty. We do not know in which uh, um, state the system has was, was initially or from where it started. right? So, this will be normally given by a probability distribution. That means, you will be given these values. So, p i naught is the probability that x naught is in state i. right? So, this at time 0 that means, at initial time the employee is in state i. So, this is there is a probability attached to it. Now, if you want to compute the probability that the employee is in HR in the human resource uh, section uh, division at time 5. So, uh, you know that means, you want to compute um, yeah. So, let us see we want to compute the probability that x 5 is equal to 2. So, the particular employee uh, at time period 5 is in uh, HR. Right? Now, let us see the column of P 5 remember the 5 step transition probabilities are given by P 5. So, the column would be P 1 to 5, P 2 to 5 and P 3, P 3 to 5. So, actually I should have written this, let me, let me write this instead of uh, you know, immediately jumping to this. So, uh, we want to say that probability x 5 is equal to 2 given that x naught is 1, right. Then you will multiply this by probability x naught equal to 1, right. So, I am writing this as a conditional probability then into the, so then and I will have to do it for all possible values of um, uh, x naught. So, to get the uh, probability that x 5 is equal to 2. So, this will be probability x 5 is equal to 2 given that uh, x naught is 2. So, probability x naught is equal to 2, right, plus probability x 5 is equal to 2 given x naught is equal to 3 into probability x 3 equal to uh, sorry uh, x naught equal to 3. So, I break up this. So, again you see mostly what you have seen that you know uh, uh, the basic probability theory that we need. Uh, for uh, analyzing these stochastic processes. So, this is uh, writing a probability as a you know breaking it up into conditional events and then writing them down as the sum of these conditional probabilities. right? And so, uh, this one gives you this is your 5 step transition probability from 1 to 2. So, 1 to 2 5 and then into probability x naught is equal to 1 which is given to you from here. So, p 1 naught. So, uh, this will be p 1 naught. Right. Similarly, this will be uh, uh, 5 step transition probability of going from 2 to 2. So, this is p 2 to 5 into probability of being in state 2 at uh, time 0. So, which is p uh, 2 0, p 2 0 and this is the third one. So, this is how you can now write down the probability. Uh, if you want to know uh, that in time period 5, the employee will be in H r. Right. And so, you can now compute in general, uh, you can say that this is now p i n will be uh, the probability uh, that the system is in state i at time n. 
And uh, see here just to uh, make the presentation simple, I am just taking uh, all the time referring to our job assignment uh, example, but you know that this can be made to whatever the number of states general you can have a symbol k here. So, k states and everything can be argued with respect to um, general number of states, but here I am doing it for this particular example just so that you can fix your ideas better. Okay. So, then uh, p i n is probably x n equal to i, that means the system is in state i at time period n. So, these are the probabilities and I have shown you how we will compute them. So, um, okay, you can write them down right here. So, this will be your, uh, 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 I am writing it as small p naught into p n. Yeah. So, when you want the um, probabilities of the system being in a particular state at time period I n, then this, this is the formula and these are called the state probabilities at time n. So, this is the important right. So, now we have we do also have the, see we have the transition probabilities for any time period and we also have the state uh, probabilities at for any time period n right. And, um, Yes. So, okay, I have written it here. So, that means, I am saying that if p n is your uh, row vector of uh, probabilities. So, this was the i th component. So, then p n is, uh, yeah, I should have written here, this is the i th component. Yeah. So, in general, so if this is a row vector uh, is p 1 n, p 2 n, p 3 n. So, that means, state probability of the system being in n, uh, being in 1 at time period n. This is probability of the system being in state 2 at time n. This is the probability of the system being in state 3 at time n. So, I denote this by rho vector p n and then this can be written as p naught into p n. So, this gives the state probabilities at time n. Right. Now, the Markov chain is completely specified when you are given the first step transition matrix p and the uh, initial probability initial uh, probabilities of the system being in a particular, particular state. So, p naught is uh, the vector which gives you p naught 1, p naught 2 and p naught 3. So, these will be the uh, probabilities when the uh, initially when the system is in state 1, 2 or 3, then you can compute uh, uh, these and of course, you can compute the uh, transition probability, n step transition probabilities also. So, let us consider an example, the uh, same example now with numbers and so we will just go through all the, uh, the concepts that we have talked about, the transition probabilities and the state probabilities, I mean higher order transition probabilities and the state probabilities. So, suppose the transition matrix is given as this. So, then the corresponding diagrams you see, for example, there is no arc from 2 to 1. So, therefore, uh, this is missing here and similarly, um, uh, you do not have a, a loop from 3 to 3. So, it is missing, the probability is 0, right. Otherwise, and you see that they add up to 1. All these probabilities, the rows must add up to 1. So, this is a valid um, transition matrix, entries are either positive or zeros, and the uh, row entries all add up to 1. So, this is a valid and the com accompanying diagram is this, the transition diagram is given by this, right. Now, let us uh, compute uh, second order uh, transition probabilities. So, I multiply p with p and I get these numbers. So, for example, here you can transition from 1 to 1 in two steps. Uh, this will be uh, 1 to 1. So, two steps. Therefore, again the same thing as I showed you that if you want to see it on the path, it will be 1 by 4 this plus then you can go to uh, okay, you cannot go to 2 in one um, two step transition, because then you cannot come back to 1. right? So, then it will be, you can go to 3 and then 3 to 1. So, this will be uh, 3 by 4 into 1 by 4. right? See, you can either uh, stay with 1 to 1 and then or you can go from 1 to 3 and then 3 to 1. This is what you can do in two steps, if you want to transition from 1 to 1. So, two possible paths. And so, therefore, this is 3 by 16 and this is 4 by 16. So, 7 by 16, right. Similarly, you can maybe look at uh, this one here, um, 5 by 16. So, this is from 1 to 2. 1 to 2, you want to transition in two steps. So, then the possible path is 1 to 2, then 2 to 1, right. So, that will be uh, what? 1 to 2 is 1 by 4 into you transition from 2 to 2 will be 1 by 2 
plus or you can go stay from 1 to 1 and then go from 1 to 2. So, that will be uh, 1 by 2 into 1 by 4 right. So, what how much will this be 1 by 8 plus 1 huh? or what uh, have I missed something out. So, this is you are going from 1 to 2. 1 to 2 you are going in 2 steps yeah. So, 1 by 2 uh, yeah this is uh, uh, 5 by 16 and you are uh, computing p 1 2 right. So, you can go from p 1 1 into p 1 1. So, that was 1 by 4 and why did I multiply it by I want to go from 1 to 1 ok sorry this is not correct why should I say it 1 to this is simply 1 to 1. So, um, this into p 1 2. So, therefore, this is half huh, that is ok. I wrote this plus 1 by 2 into 1 by 4 or I can go from 1 to 2 which is 1 by 4 and then transition from 2 to 2. So, that comes out to be uh, 2 by 8 and I am getting it as 5 by 16. So, let us multiply this uh, that means, you want 1 and 2. So, that will be um, I am missing out on a path 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 16. So, 1 by if you want to go from 1 to 2. So, the uh, right I missed out on the path. So, this is uh, 1 to 1 and then 1 to 2 then 1 to 2 and 2 to 2 and then there is another path 1 to 3 and 3 to 2. So, plus 1 to 3 is 1 by 4 and then from into 3 to 2 is 1 by 4. See that is what I was trying to say that uh, you know uh, even in such a small diagram I was missing out on a path. So, just imagine if you had uh, 5 or 6 states and then you had uh, you know that many nodes. So, and then you had these so many arcs you will certainly miss out it will be very difficult or it will be very time consuming to enumerate all possible paths. So, uh, as it is you know such a small example I could miss out on the path 1 to 3 and 3 to 2. So, that will give you now 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 16. So, that will be 5 by 16 right 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 which will be 1 by 4. So, that is 4 by 16 plus 1 by 16 5 by 16. So, anyway you can now uh, interpret all these probabilities uh, you know by looking at the path or by fine. Now, uh, I made further uh, computations took powers of uh, uh, p. Uh, so, this is p 3 comes out to be this and if you make uh, compute, uh, compute the fourth power then these are the numbers ok. And another aspect that I want to point out here is that for example, in this particular case you are able to transition from any state to any state even though some of the arcs are missing, but even after that you can you from go from 1 to 2, 2 to 3. 3 to 1 again and so on. So, you can transition from any state to any state may be not in one step always, but in fact here it is happening that you are able to go yeah for example, from 2 to 1 you cannot go in one step, but you will be able to go from 2 to 3 and then 3 to 1. So, in 2 steps you will be able to transition. So, here in fact uh, the moment all your entries see at p 2 yeah. So, at p 2 all your entries are positive which shows see therefore, it means your p i j 2 is positive for all i j. So, this uh, immediately makes you conclude that you have a two, uh, two step path from each state to from every state to uh, every other state. Okay. So, that means they and the, so the word for this is communicate that means all states communicate with each other and maybe not in one step, but at least in two. So, if all entries of p i j 2 are positive then that means all states communicate with each other. I will formally define that also, but essentially what I want to say here is that you can go from any state to an another state uh, in two steps in this particular example. And in, in some other example if it is you know there, there is some k for which this is positive, then that means again uh, there is a, a k step path from uh, every state to another state. Okay. And um, yeah. So, now when you look at the fourth uh, uh, power of p these are the numbers and you can uh, now if you carefully look at the column numbers this is 103 upon 256 
102 upon 256 and 102 upon 256. So, the numbers are getting closer right? and we can say that almost converging to 102 upon 256. In fact, um, you might say that why not 103 or 102, but any one of these numbers. So, in other words that uh, you know if you uh, uh, want to interpret these numbers, that means now the probability say for example, what is this number? So, 103 upon 256 is the probability of 114. That means, 4 steps you are uh, from 1 to 1 right? and then 102 upon 256 will is the probability 2 1 uh, 4. Right? That means, if you so here it says that if you are initially in state 1, then in 4 steps you will be back in state 1. So, this is the probability. Now, this says that if you are in state 2, in the beginning and you transition to 1 in 4 steps, then this is the probability. And the third one is 102 upon 256. So, this is P314. So, that means, you are in state 3 and you are transitioning to 1 in 4 steps. So, you see that it is becoming almost immaterial uh, to know from where you started, because these probabilities are getting closer. And we will show you then later on, we will also um, uh, formalize all this discussion. So, essentially um, the state in which you were at the initial time is becoming unimportant. These, and similarly, the same thing you can interpret for the second column, because it is 85 by 256, 86 by 256 and 85. So, these numbers are also getting closer to 85. And here I have uh, written, because here it is 68 by 256. 68 by 256 and 69 by 256. So, you might say that why not 68, but then uh, see remember uh, the um, probabilities which you, when you finally say that all these are converging to, they must also add up to 1, right? because uh, the system has to be in one of the states. So, the same argument we will continue using. And so, here I, if, I, if I say that this converges to 102, this to uh, upon 256, this is 85 by 256, then this should be 69 by 256. Of course, it is possible that they. So, essentially right now the probability of being in state 1 after 4 transitions is hovering between 102. 256. So, which is a more exact statement? This is a more exact statement, right? Similarly, here also I can say the probability of being in state 2 um, uh, after 4 transitions is between uh, is in the interval 85 upon 256 and 86 upon 256, right? Which is a very small interval, right? So, difference of 1 upon 256. And similarly, here it will be 68 upon 256 and 69 upon 256. So, this probabilities. And if you take the fifth power, then uh, uh, certainly you will see that the numbers are converging and we will talk about this formally in a way. Yeah, and also um, while uh, we were talking of this, see I wanted to point out that uh, uh, here again these probabilities, because it is now a row vector. This is a row vector, remember 1 by 3 we are writing. So, this is 1 by 3 and this is 3 by 3. So, then again this is 1 by 3. So, the 3 entries must again add up to 1, because at uh, transi uh, you know n after n transitions, your system will be either in 1, 2 or 3. So, therefore, these probabilities also must add up to 1, right? which you can see here also. That so, anyway these also add up to 1 and then uh, now uh, suppose for this um, job assignment problem, if your initial probabilities are given by 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 2, that means probability of being in um, production is 1 by 4, pro uh, probability of being in HR is 1 by 4 and probability of um, being in sales is half. Then you want to ask the question that what are the probabilities of being in state in 1, 2 or 3 after 2 transitions. So, that will be given by this. right? So, 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 2 multiplied by p square and so, um, these are the probabilities of being in, um, uh, no. So, this gives you the probability of being in uh, production after 2 transitions right? and this is the probability of being. So, these are the state probabilities after 2 steps, after 2 time period. So, this is 21 by 64 and 18 by 64 and these probabilities also must add up to 1. Right? 
So, uh, now we are trying to uh, give you some more characteristics of the uh, Markov process and uh, we will do a lot of analysis in terms of these uh, transition probabilities and the state probabilities. So, let us uh, just want to show you uh, uh, the limiting behavior of these uh, steady state probabilities. So, let us just graph the values of p 1 3, p 2 3 and p 3 3 for different values of n. So, you see the starting vector is 1 by 4, 1 by 2 and 0. So, p 1 3 for example, 1 by 4 is 0 0.25. So, I am just starting. So, th these are the time periods and these are your probabilities. So, numbers from 0 0.1 to 0 0.5. So, 0 0.25 see at time 1 it is uh, in period 1 it is 0 0.25. Then here also 4 by 16 is uh, 0 0.25. So, in period 2 also this is the same then it very slightly goes up in period 3 to 17 by 64. So, I am just showing it like this and then it comes down to 68 point uh, 68 upon 256. Now, 68 upon 256 is 0.26. So, therefore, it uh, comes down to um, uh, point this is this is my value for uh, 0.26. Okay. So, this is the graph for P 1 3. Okay, as it goes to the different periods. So, the values transition probabilities. Then, uh, if you look at p 2 3 now, p 2 3 starts from half, right? then it immediately comes down to 0 0.25, because this is 1 by 4. So, 0 0.25, so this is where it is and then uh, in the next one it goes to 18 by 64. So, actually um, uh, sorry, the, my uh, graph for p 1 3 is this one because very slightly it goes up and then again it settles to here. This is the graph for P 2 3. So, P 2 3 um, uh, the P 2 3 graph is this. So, this is from 0.5 to 0.25 then it goes up to 18 by 64. So, this is above more than 17 by 64 this and then it again comes to 68 by 256. So, the same value as for P 1 3 okay. P 1 3 4 and P 2 3 4 are the same. Okay. So, this is how it is and for the uh, for uh, P 3 3 see it is 0 in the beginning and in stage uh, time period 1 then it jumps to 5 by 16 which is a little more than uh, 1 by 4. So, little more than 0.25 and then it comes to 16 by uh, 64 which is exactly 0.25. right? So, I have tried to just parallel it with this one here and then it will be 69.256. So, the line is slightly above this. So, therefore, you can see that and then uh, as, as you take higher powers all three will settle down to this number which we have to compute and we will do it uh, when we find out uh, the steady state probabilities. So, you see uh, the, this is the limiting behavior and so it does not matter uh, even though the three had different very different starts all the three, but finally they merge to the same. So, therefore, the relevance of the uh, starting state of the process is uh, not at all uh, relevant here. This is what we want to show and of course, this will uh, so uh, this this will not always be true and we will now then find out during the course of uh, few next few lectures as to when this is valid or when this kind of limiting behavior is valid. Okay. So, uh, so what is uh, what we are going to say is that rows of p n become identical to pi 1, pi 2, pi 3. Okay, all the rows because it doesn't matter the starting uh, state of the uh, the starting state of the system, and so all the rows will be pi one, pi two, pi three. But uh, it's not necessary that the three probabilities are the same, right? So that means it is uh, uh, being so essentially what we are saying. This is now a long-term behavior. We are saying that the system will be in state one. So that is the probability, right? Then this is the uh, probability of the system being in state two and this is the probability of the system being in state 3. So, uh, the starting probabilities are not relevant, but uh, uh, the uh, values uh, the uh, long run values will not necessarily be the same. Okay. And so, the definition for the steady state probability is that pi j is the limit of p j n as n goes to infinity. Right? Remember, we define this as the uh, you know multiply by p 0 and p n. So, uh, this is um, a limiting uh, value of p j n and goes to infinity, which is actually probability x n is in j, right. In the long run, your system is occupying state j as n goes to infinity. And what we are saying now is that uh, this actually is equal to this conditional probability 
but uh, th this part is becoming irrelevant, right. So, the i see the, the probability finally is going to pi j. So, the i part is irrelevant here, this is what we want to show you. And uh, so, we will uh, in the next lecture uh, discuss the uh, 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 under what conditions, well, of course, that will come in the due course of time, but first of all we would want to know how we go about computing these uh, steady state probabilities. Um, when when we know that they are uh, they exist, uh, so right now we will assume that they exist and then we will find out a method of computing them and then uh, we will continue with the discussion, discussion as to under what conditions they uh, always exist.